This video is just an overview of the basic features found on the Soma Phoenix 2 software. Your operations manual will show all the options and features included with the Phoenix 2. The Phoenix 2 software will open to the main analysis screen. The shutter should close and the x-ray light turn on when the software turns on. Initially, the Analyze button is yellow. Every 30 minutes, the analyzer is looking for a complete chrome analysis against the safety shutter. It is best to allow the analyzer to warm up for 30 to 45 minutes before use. Once the Analyze button changes to green, you can analyze the sample simply by placing a prepared sample on the aperture, closing the door, and pressing Analyze. The active method is seen to the right of the Analyze button. By selecting the current method, you are given a list of available methods to select, the option to create a new one, or to import a method from a method library. If you select the method, you are taken back to the main analysis screen with that method active. Selecting Pick Sample lets you query the database for samples that have been analyzed. You can choose from recent, to last hour, to today, yesterday, and using the t from and to, you can select specific time periods. When you select a sample, that information will show up on the main analysis screen. To reprint the sample, select the sample ID. To see the spectra details, select the date time step next to the word time. The sample details are often needed to troubleshoot and to set up the method. The details show how the method was configured, the overall counts, the temperature and pressure, and the individual regions of interest for the element, or ROI. Selecting spectrum allows you to see the spectrum for this sample. If I select the off and turn it to on, a red KLM marker appears. I can use the plus or minus key to move the marker across the energy scale. Here I have copper. If I touch the screen, a blue line appears. The KEV of where this line is on the energy scale is located to the right of the plus or minus keys. This option is helpful in setting up the correct regions for your application. Selecting Done and OK will get you back to the main analysis screen. Calibration is selected to edit the method configuration, to run the calibration, set up standards, or put in user corrections if needed. If you select calibration, you are given the options to configure the method, to acquire the calibration samples, the method report, adjust to set up standardize or user corrections, and to save. Select configure to see what elements the method is going to analyze. Selecting edit lets you change the elements, the label of oxide versus element, for example, the units of measure, and the number of digits reported to the right of the decimal place. Selecting conditions allows you to edit the condition name, the voltage, the current or microamps, the settling, the warm-up time in seconds, the filter or target used, and the analysis count time. Selecting edit allows you to change these settings as well as to set up a background region. The voltage, or KV, is based off theory in the target used. You should refer to the specifications manual to ensure you know what targets are on your analyzer. Once you know the target, you will use the suggested KV and only change the other parameters to set up your method. In general, the goal for almost all applications is to have an overall count rate for the highest concentration sample around 20 to 23,000 counts per second. Once you set the voltage, you set up the method using a lower current microamp setting. You put the highest concentration sample on the aperture, close the sample door, and select Test. The OCR value is displayed to the left. If the counts are too low, raise the microamp value and try again. If the OCR value is too high, lower the microamp value and try it again. This step is completed by trial and error. The voltages used depend on your target material. 
The Phoenix 2, using direct excitation, can have an open anode, a moly filter, a titanium filter, or a copper filter. These voltages are what you should use depending on your target mechanism. The same is true for the Phoenix 2 using polarization. The Hop G always uses 20 kV, the Molly 35 kV, and the palladium tube filter 40 kV. In this example, I have my highest concentration copper standard on the aperture. I have a low microamp setting of 15 microamps, and I'll select test. The shutter will open and the analysis will begin. I can see right away I do not have enough counts with only 9,000 counts. So instead of letting the analysis complete, I'll select done. So now I need more counts, so I'll raise the microamp settings. We will try 40. And then we'll test again. You can see now my counts are great. They're between 20 and 23,000 counts per second. Now at this point, I can actually select the left side of the peak, and I can see it's actually two lines. With a mouse, I can have two lines. But I can see that the setting for the KEV on the low end should be about 7 KEV. And I can collect the right side of the peak and see, oh, about 9.2 or 3 would be good. You don't have to be perfect. It's not an exact science. So once I remember my settings, I have about 9.3 to 7. I can select done. And at this point, I have my voltage current all set up. And then I could go back to my elements and I could put those regions in for my copper settings if I need to change them. The overlap button it's used to set up the method to calculate for background overlap corrections and possible ROS filter interference and spectral overlap or cross corrections with overlapping elements. Once the method is set up with the correct elements to be analyzed, the condition set up, the overlap selected, it is time to analyze the calibration standards. Save any changes first and the calibration is com completed under the acquire option. But remember, if you are calibrating over an existing method that uses standardized, you must clear the old standardized factor first by selecting Adjust, Standardized Configuration, and Reject. To start the calibration, select Acquire. The Overlap Samples option is where you analyze a blank sample that fits your matrix that contains no elements such as a blank or zero ppm diesel, mineral oil, DI water, the Teflon backscatter, or the polyethylene backscatter. The SES refers to the single element sample. For a single element application, this sample does not have to be analyzed. Or in applications where the element ener energies do not overlap, like sulfur and vanadium. Applications with adjacent elements, like copper and iron, should have the overlap options set up to calculate under the cross corrections. Don't forget to analyze these when you either start a method from scratch or are recalibrating over an existing method. To analyze the overlap sample, simply put the correct sample on the aperture and select Analyze. When the analysis of the overlap sample is complete, select Done and Done, and now select to analyze the assayed standards. The blank, in most cases, will have far less counts per second than a known assayed standard. Once the blank has completed its analysis, select OK and Done and then assayed standards. Initially, this li list is left blank. You can either create a new sample or you can edit existing samples by selecting the label under Edit. Or you can delete the sample entirely. If you select to analyze over a previously measured sample, the old data will be overwritten. Once all the assayed standards have been analyzed, the fit should be confirmed. To get to the fit, you'll select OK, Done, Done. You want to save any changes and select Configure. 
Fit or Auto Fit will work to pick your fits. Auto Fit will pick the best fit with slope, offset, and curvature. However, it does not remove any bad samples or select the use of alpha, alpha corrections. Alpha calculations are typically required when an application has more than one element and the concentrations vary independently of each other. Once the fit is collected, you can edit the fit options for slope, offset, curvature, alpha corrections, or inverted net. The alpha corrections and, and inverted net are rarely used. The goal of selecting a fit is to pick a valid setup with the lowest standard estimate of error. A valid fit will have a positive slope an offset value that is less than the lowest standard concentration and a curvature with a small absolute value. The SEE is normally about 1% of the highest standard when using a set of well-assayed standards for simple applications. Once you complete the calibration fit, you can look at the correlation plot. Or if you have one sample that you feel reads worse than the others, you can go to data and you can disable that sample. Now it's not used in the fit and you can see the error is a little bit better. And on the correlation plot is noted with the X. Once the fit is selected, you can set up the standardized feature. The standardized is used to prolong the life of your calibration and will correct for drift. For lighter elements like silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur, this feature is required as the light element x-rays are readily influenced by temperature and pressure. Heavier elements don't necessarily require this feature to maintain stable results. However, the pass-fail when updating standardized shows that the instrument and calibration are still working well and the results are valid. To set up the initial standardized reference value, you will select Done as needed to get back to the Configure Acquire Report screen. I need to select Save and Complete Save, so all my calibration information is saved. Select Adjust. Select Standardize Configuration. If the standardize is already set up, as seen here, the table with the element, reference count, recent count, factor, and state will be seen. Again, if you're calibrating over an existing method, you must clear out this factor if it is not one by selecting Reject and Totally before you calibrate. To set up a new reference count, select Acquire. The sample you use may be one of the single element samples supplied with your analyzer or one of your samples. The sample must be stable and are reproducible. The SESs supplied with your analyzer are not completely homogeneous, so mark the sample so that you can align it the same way each time for analysis. The sample ID can be changed. To analyze the sample, put the sample on the aperture, close the door, and press Analyze Original. When the analysis is complete, the reference values will be seen on the screen. Select Done and Done to return to the main analysis screen. If the Adjust Standardized is light blue, it is enabled and set up. If it is dark blue, the method does not have this option set up. When you start to see a QC sample drift or not the expected value, place the standardized sample on the aperture and press standardize. The analysis will begin and the factor calculated after the analysis will be applied to your unknown results. After the calibration, you should analyze a few of the assayed standards to ensure that they read what they did in the calibration. If a sample reads poorly in the calibration, it will still read poorly as an unknown sample. To analyze the sample, just place the sample on the aperture and press Analyze. You can select ID to give the sample a name. If you are satisfied with the results, you should make a backup of the database. Put a USB drive in the back of the analyzer. Select System, select Storage, Select Backup and Backup. Two files are put on the drive. One is backup.yourserialnumber.zip and the other is a backup.theserialnumber.properties. 
This will have all the instrument information as well as all your methods. The backup can be used to restore from this point if for some reason your method gets corrupted or changed. The validate option allows you to analyze statistical runs or set up validation limits for your product or a specific sample. More options such as data logging, the service menus, users, exporting methods, copying methods, importing methods, and troubleshooting are readily found in your operations manual. Thank you.